Hey, what's going on? It's a great Thursday. It is what day eighty one, man. We're uh, we're a day away from the weekend, so you know, go finish strong. Hey, today's going to be a heavy post. I'm going to warn you. For some of you, um, you may not agree with this. Okay, it's one of those posts, um, but. You know, I always I, I, I like to kind of grab a wide range of topics to, to try to motivate you and, and keep the ball rolling, helping you move the needle in life and, and all that good stuff. So today, you know, I, I'm kind of getting the sense that there are a lot of people out there, including me, you know, uh, I'll be the first to admit that wasn't sure what I believed in. You know, when I was a little kid, my mom used to come in and she'd want to read the Bible to us before we'd go to bed. And we're, my brothers and I were like, Mom, come on. <laughs> really? Uh, I don't... I don't want you to read the Bible. Come on, it's boring. You know, the invisible man. Come on, Mom. Uh, it, it was always that, you know. But as time goes on, as you face trials and tribulations in life, and as I continue trying to do things my way, and uh, they didn't work, <laughs> and I had to be honest with myself and ask Ken, you know, are you really where you want to be in life? Are you really happy? Um, with the choices you're making and the thing and the decisions you're making to maybe do things to your own body that 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 don't make sense, and uh, you know uh, be selfish, self-centered, and all that stuff. Um, and uh, I had to ask myself, you know, um, it, my best thinking has got me to where I'm at, and if that's where I'm at and that's not where I want to be, maybe there's another way to skin this cat. So you know, I started uh, doing a little digging and doing a little research. And the story goes like this, you know, for some of you out there that are finding the similar situation where you're not quite sure what to believe in, you know, you want to surrender. You, you've heard me talk about giving your life and your will over to a care of a higher power of authority. So I'm just going to give you my perspective. This by no means is uh, trying to insinuate that you're right and wrong in your beliefs, uh, but you're welcome to put your comments in the comment section or share or debate whatever you'd like. But this is not uh, an attempt to tell you what you're doing or believing in is wrong. Perhaps you don't even know what you believe in. And what I'm about to share with you might do for you what it did for me a long time ago is to got the wheels spinning and allow me to start formulating an opinion of where my belief system was going to lie. And this is kind of what got started. So I was, uh, I, I actually was um, watching a movie when I was a kid and, uh, you know, Jesus was being crucified. And I heard him say, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Abba. Abba Lama Simbakthani, something along those lines. And, and that, that was the language they spoke at the time. And I think for the translation is, you know, Abba is father. Father, why have you forsaken me? Uh, uh, I think it was uh, Abba, Abba uh, Lama Simbakthani is, is the, you know, butchered translation <laughs> and uh, in Latin. So um, I, I was like, why, why is he saying, Father, Father, why are you forsaking me? Well, as I did more research, I realized... Um, you know, when when Jesus came to earth, you know, and claimed to be God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, he, he was the man, right? And uh, he said, when you look at me, you see both the Father and the Son. Oh, we're, we're all in one. We're in agreement. I've been given all power of authority in heaven and earth to forgive sins and all that good stuff. So in the Bible, Scripture says that the penalty for sin is death. There's no escape in it. If you've committed one sin, if you've broken one of God's Ten Commandments, you've broken them all. You're a sinner. We're all sinners. It's just, you can't, I mean, it just happens. We fall short of God's glory. So the penalty is death. I mean, that's just the way it is. So, you know, when Jesus comes down here, he's the Son of God. God the Father says, hey, man, you know, I'm going to sacrifice my son. He's the lamb, right? And if I'm about to do what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask that you can believe in what you're about to see in here and that my son is the one that has indeed been given all authority on heaven and earth. And if you show faith in him and surrender in him, you know, and let us do our will in you, wonderful things will happen. You'll have a great life, you know. And so when I did more research, I realized that at that moment, this man who had never committed any sin in Scripture in Galatians, it says, you know, he was a man of no sin, but he was pinned and found guilty of all sins, past, present, and future for all people of all mankind. Every living person who ever lived and committed sins, Jesus was convicted of those sins. Every living person at that moment that he died that was sinning at that moment, he was convicted of those sins. And every sin that you'll ever commit and everybody that lives in the future that will ever commit, he was convicted of those sins. 
and he was punished. And God punished him. He who had no sin was convicted of sin. And God punished him, nailed him to the cross, sacrificed his only son. And, 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 and when I looked at him, I'm like, man, you know, Jesus was no exception to pain and suffering. So why should I be thinking that I'll be in the exception? I've got to share in those same burdens and, and, and learn from them. And if I surrender my will in my life, I can be forgiven for my sins because the man that died on the cross for me was already convicted of my sins. All I have to do is believe in him and ask him to forgive me of mine. Not only will he forgive me of mine, but uh, he'll remember them no more. And, um, you know, I've been speaking about this in the past. It is what transformed the church. It's what transformed, if you want to call it religion, people's beliefs. That this man had never uh, committed any sin, was convicted of all sins, past, present, and future, died on the cross. And because God is holy and he cannot be in the presence of evil or sin, right? He cannot be around it. He has to turn another eye. And at that moment, you know, Scripture says a dark cloud came over Jesus' head over the cross, separating him from God the Father and God the Son. That's when Jesus looked up and said, Abba, Abba, you know, Lama Simachthani, you know, why did, why did you forsake me? Why have you left me? And it was a true moment where Jesus in his human form actually experiences the separation from God that we separate when, you know, we, we, we've experienced when we sin. Because when you do stupid stuff, when I do so, I know I'm not connected to him. And don't tell me you've done the same thing and you've not felt it. You know when you screw up, right? That's what Jesus was experiencing. And that's why he said, why have you forsaken me? God just said, I'm sorry, son. I had to pin everything on you so that the others can believe what I'm about to do. And that is raise you from the dead so that they may have faith uh, and hope in you as their Lord and Savior. So that's kind of the drill. Be brave. Be strong. Go get what's yours and give some thought to that. Bye-bye.